mm-hmm. like we told you guys, we were we're going to continue to create content as much and as often as possible during this entire period, wh- however long this lasts. Hopefully, it's not uh, too long. It's just as long as we, we need it to be so we can, uh, you know, stamp this whole virus situation out as quickly as possible. But, um, you know, there's, it's it's definitely a crazy time. And it's a crazy time for everybody. We're all kind of dealing with the exact same thing at the exact same time um, in different ways, obviously. But it's such a unique situation in that way that everyone simultaneously is having kind of a, a universal experience. Um, for sure. So it's, but yeah, we're, we're going to be here doing this. I do want to take a second uh, before we really get into anything. And just from us here at Variant, uh, Triune Films and Variant, um, just to say thank you to all the many healthcare workers and first responders yes. and the people that are working in the grocery stores and the warehouse and the, the truckers that are just keeping supply lines going as best as possible. Oh my gosh, all the many people that are still going into work at restaurants every day to do the takeout and the delivery and all these things to make sure that things are running as, as much as possible for all the things that we need to keep running during all of this. There's a lot of people that are actually putting their lives at risk. You know, why we're all sitting at home and, and we all owe them an incredible debt of gratitude. So from us to all of you, many, many, many thanks. Uh, it's, it's, thanks doesn't even really feel like enough, especially uh, for you, uh, healthcare workers and the police and firemen and, you know, all, all the paramedics and the EMTs that are going and, you know, dealing with people who are dealing with, you know, incredible symptoms, you know, just on a daily basis. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's crazy when you think about it, like even like sanitation and stuff, guys who come pick up your trash and stuff. Imagine if that got shut down. You'd be, you know, especially since we're home, the amount of trash we're compiling every day just sitting at home, if that just yeah. piled and piled without them picking it up, it just yeah. really puts things in perspective. Speaking of all that stuff, though, this is obviously causing a lot of stuff to shut down. All the non-essential stuff, like everything we just mentioned is all the essential, essential stuff we need to, you know, function with everyday life. But, you know, as much as we love comic books, that is not essential to everyday life, right? That is definitely right. something that could be paused. And, you know, because of everything going around and the strains in the delivery industry right now, Diamond Distribution, who is the sole proprietor for distributing comics to the country and world for the most part, well, the country, let's say, I'm not sure if they're, you know, not, you know, global, but for the country, they have shut down indefinitely. They are no longer shipping new comics to comic book shops, which in turn is causing the comic shops to close. Now, a lot of comic book shops, depending where you were in the country, were already forced to shut down because, again, that's not an essential business. But there's still a good amount of the country where they were allowed to be open. But even those guys aren't getting the new comics because, again, only Diamond is the distributor. And if they're not shipping new product, no comic book shop in the country is getting comics. So this is put. This is a big hit to the comic book industry right now. As we yeah. know, this pandemic, you know, is you know going to have massive effects to our economy and small businesses. And the comic book industry is definitely one that's going to take a hit, particularly the brick and mortar comic book shops. There's been a lot of talk of how they're going to deal with this, you know, being closed for two weeks, a month, you know, with not getting any sales, how they're going to make rent. And a lot of people are saying, you know, a lot of the shop owners are saying, please don't just do direct to digital because that was the obvious thing, right? They're like, well, you still, you still get your new comic books through digital for the time being. But a lot of the shop owners are saying, if you do that, that's not going to give our readers incentive to also want to buy are books that have been stalled in the pipeline. Sure, you'll have the collectors who want the print, but the majority of people will be like, well, I already read that. Uh, you know what yeah. I mean? That's gonna cut a lot of their sales. So there's lots of craziness going on and uncertainty on what's gonna happen. Marvel, DC, all the big publishers haven't really even said at the time of shooting this uh, podcast, whether they're gonna continue to, to release digitally or they're just gonna halt new comics and stories in entirety, meaning no new digital and no print. So we don't know yet. And that is, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, it's right in line with what we talked about on our last podcast when we kind of went into detail on, you know, what is the world going to look like when all of this is over, right? Like, Mm -hmm. you know, there's so many things, there's so much uncertainty right now just across the board. The Senate is passing, uh, the Congress in general uh, is passing this huge, huge uh, stimulus package and relief package. Um, That is going to help out many businesses that are going to get hit really hard, um, including companies, you know, like uh, comic book distributors and and, uh, movie theaters and and stuff like that. Um, There's going to be a lot of help. uh, And I personally don't think this is the last relief bill we're going to see. We're probably going to see at least one more, maybe more than that. 
depending upon uh, upon how long this goes on, right? So, but regardless, the, the, the amount of damage that we've already done just by bringing so many different industries to a complete and utter standstill um, so that everyone can sit home and kind of social distance and hopefully tamp out this virus situation, um, just what we've done so far to battle this thing uh, is going to have consequences. It's going to have economic repercussions. And we are, you know, trying to soften the blow in terms of the impact it's going to have on, you know, employees and workers and businesses so that when this is over, they can kind of start back up wherever it is. But there's going to be, uh, so there's going to be residual effects, you know, uh, and what those are going to look like, particularly for the industries and or segments of industries um, like the comic book industry, like the entertainment industry, that were already on that precipice, that edge in so many different ways due to transformational technologies. It's going to be really interesting to see how this all continues to play out. And, you know, Diamond Select, bringing everything to a standstill, you can't help but wonder, you know, is this going to create that question in publishers' minds of, we can't be held hostage like this if this were to ever happen again. You know, this is this could destroy us completely. Yes, right this time, you know, we might survive it. But if this happens again in the near future, in other words, if a year from now, you know, this coronavirus, you know, if it is a seasonal type virus and it flares up again next year and they have to, you know, battle this thing back again. I mean, obviously, the hope is there's a there's some kind of a vaccine or medications mm -hmm. that will help us, you know, really kind of reduce that. But let's just say in the event, you know, because they have to war game that out. That's what these companies and these executives do is they war game and say, if this happens again, even if it's not coronavirus, it's something else, uh, you know, I don't know that we survive around two. Uh, so they have to think, OK, what's the most efficient way? We know things are going more and more digital. Is it wise for us to just, you know, take a hint and start you know, streamlining this now and move that, you know, and, you know, move that adoption uh, mm -hmm. rate at, to, to just ramp that up to a maximum speed. And, and, you know, we don't know that for sure. I, you know, I believe, and I think I know you do too, is that we're going to get physical comic books back when this is over, how, how much we get back and how long that remains the case um, will yet to be seen. But, uh, it, it's going to be really interesting to see how this all plays out once it does get lifted, once it, you know, they're able to start publishing again, um, because they're going to they're going to be licking their wounds just as far as the economic impact of all this for months to come. So it's going to be very interesting to see. Well, yeah, I, you know, I've I've said, you know, on the show and on the podcast for a while now that it's only a matter of time before the comic book industry, the comic book industry changes. Uh, we've been talking about it a lot, you know, all the yeah. changes at DC, uh, you know, even Marvel and stuff like that. It's it's just, it's the natural evolution of life. You know, it's not just comic yeah. books. We have, I use the analogy all the time. Same thing happened with music. You know, we had CDs, tapes, and records. Then we hit the digital age with, like, Napster and iTunes and all that stuff. Now, most mm -hmm. music, I would, I would say, like, easily, you know, like, 80% of music is consumed via, like, di a digital file, like an MP3 file on your phone, on your iPad, you know, some something of that sort. And even with movies, it's kind of happening. We see that we see the same thing because of this pandemic happening with movies right now, even more so. The theaters are shut down. A lot of the studios are, you know, going straight to video on demand. And then right. some of the bigger movies, they're like, no, we're going to hold like Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman has been paused till August. Uh, Warner Brothers officially came out the other day and said, look, we're going to move it to August. Hopefully everything's cleared up by then. This was Pat, Patty Jenkins said on Twitter, this movie was meant to see in theater. So they're doing that with right. some stuff, but then other stuff like Trolls 2, that's got a straight to video mm -hmm. on demand release. Net wasn't even in the theater for a week. It will only ever live digital now. So, yeah. it, you know, which the movie theaters, just like the brick and mortar comic book shops are like, hey man, what that's not good for our business though. What, what, what's going on? And, you know, I always think there's going to be a place for print comic books. Like I've been, you know, right here. I got a Batman Adventures 2. I've got this in like 93, 94. Still have it. I love print comic books. Had this for, you know, two decades now. Always will. Um, so there's always going to be a fan base for that. There's always going to be people who want that. I'm one of those. But at the same time, I think the majority of people would rather digital. Because as much as I love print and I still do collect them, I've said it all the time, 
I do read a lot of digital. I think I actually do read more digital because of our show and what we do. It's just easier, you know, to, to have everything digital, especially when I'm reading late at night. I'm in bed. It's 11 o'clock at night with my wife. I just take up my iPad. She's watching her show and I'm reading, you know, I don't have to yeah. turn the light on. I'm reading something on my on my iPad. So it, it's just a natural progression of things. And I'm just worried that this is going to be that push to make it happen, you know, to be a drastic change and not kind of ease into it. Like yeah. not the, so the comic book shops won't be prepared. It won't be gradual where, you know, everything evolves slowly and everyone kind of has their, their, their corners in place and stuff like that. But with this, I'm not saying it's going to be, but it could very much be like a, Oh, a drastic, almost overnight change where now you're talking about almost overnight. The majority of sales are digital. I don't know how quickly that would happen. Cause I do know uh, the, the majority of the comic book industry survives because of print. The majority, the way, the, the, the number of print sales still outweigh the digital sales by a lot. But in sure. times of need and necessity, those diehard fans uh, who want to read their stories, who want to know Punchline's origin that's supposed to be coming out in the next few weeks here, and all the, the stories that are, you know, have been lined up for the year, we want to know what's going to happen. If we can't get our print, sure, we like collecting, but we still like the stories. That's, why, that's first and foremost, yeah. that's why we, we read, right? Because you want the story. So you're going to buy the digital, and that's, in turn, I don't know what the percentage is going to be, but that is going to draw a lot more people to digital because they'll be like, oh, I've been doing this for two months. I kind of like it. Maybe it is a little easier. I don't, you know, save space. I don't have to drive to the shops. And, you know, it's just, I'm not picking one side or another. It just seems like that seems the way to be, that seems to be the way life goes with everything, movies, yeah. digital, comics. So it's kind of sad. And there, I think, like, like movie theaters, there's always going to be movie theaters. I just think in the coming years, it's going to be a little less. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where back in the day, there was a movie theater on every single corner. This is just my personal opinion. But I feel like in the coming years, you know, there's just not going to be as many regals in Cinemarks everywhere. And I think the same thing has been happening with comic book shops, and that's only sadly going to continue to happen. But there always will be a market. I just don't think it's going to be as big as it was in the 90s and stuff like that. So, you know, for the diehards, I'd say don't fret. You're still going to have your print. It's just not going to be in an abundance like it was in, you know, the boom in the 90s and stuff like that. And this could be, you know, the publishers could use this as a big push to be like, look, digital because that's also going to be cheaper for them right from a business standpoint they don't have to worry about printing paper shipping it's a freaking file they upload to the cloud you buy it for your three bucks which is the same price as a print comic that's another thing digital is the same price as print which is kind of weird but that's for another conversation so they're still making their three dollars so you know there's a lot of things leaning into the favor of digital right now love it or hate it and uh you know it seems like this could be the dawn of a new age yeah, you know, again, we don't we don't know what it's going to look like. It, it it definitely is going to have. We're going to get print comic books back again when this is oh, all. Oh, for sure, for sure. sure. Um, so it's not going to be an immediate. What I what I really think is it will do is it's going to speed the adoption uh, of digital only because again, people are going to want the comics, and if the only way you can access most of them is digitally, well, then they're going to just get them digitally. That's just the mm -hmm. way it'll, it'll be. Um, the question is, how quickly will the industry force that, that move, right? Uh, because in the, at the end of the day, these comic book publishers are businesses, and it's about survivability. So if they're mm -hmm. looking at this and they're saying, look, everything is shifting. We're already seeing a certain percentage of our sales shift toward digital as it is. And then there's all these other potential issues you know, where, where comic book shops are going out of, because that's the other big problem, right? Is that how, how hard of a hit are comic book shops going to take during all of this, right? Oh, for sure. How long they have to stay closed. They were already struggling heavily throughout the country. Uh, mm -hmm. And we're, well, I would say the United States, I won't speak for the world, but uh, they were already struggling heavily throughout the country. Uh, so it's how big of a hit, how many of them are going to be able to survive this. And if you have this constantly shrinking number of comic book shops that are even ordering the print copies, you know, what do you do to offset that to keep that a viable uh, aspect of your, your publishing side? You know, so it's, it's just they're mounting problems and, it, and they're going to, they're sitting down, they're going to say, you know, again, this is about survivability. What is going to allow us to stay a viable industry for the next 10, 20, 30 years. And mm -hmm. with the direction of everything, they're saying, look, we just need, you know, there's a very good chance in the very near future, 
Uh, and this situation is going to expedite this idea of just ripping the Band-Aid off and saying, OK, we just need to we need to figure out the most efficient way to keep certain level of print, um, you know, whether it be for collectible collectors or novelty. Um, but the start moving heavily and rapidly in the in the direction of uh, digital. But I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of worried for the con I have friends that own comic book shops. So I'm kind of worried to see what the publishers are going to do. Because, again, as of recording this, uh, we don't, like Marvel, DC, all the big guys haven't made an announcement of what they're doing. So technically, we don't know if, you know, next week here or whatever, if, you know, we could still buy the new Batman digitally. We know mm -hmm. we can't get it print because Diamond stopped distribution. So I'm curious. And I don't even know. I'm kind of wrestling in my head, too, like where I fall as, like, would I want all publish, you know, all publishers to not even release digital comics right now and just wait for the comic book shops or they have to do, though you think they do well because here's the thing i've heard things go around where owners and people are like well what if you do this what if what now they implement something with comicsology let's say where let's say next week the new batman comes out right with buying the new uh batman that they give you dc each publisher would have to do this gives you a code to redeem a print copy at your local comic book shop later on so when buying that digital you're also getting a code that would allow you to somehow that they send, you know, they work it out with comic book shops. So you could bring that to a comic book shop and redeem that book there later when they're shipping physical copies. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that would work. I don't know, you know, how crazy the logistics would be. That seems like something that could be, you know, doable. Uh, I do think, though, if they, let's say next week here, we still get new comic books digitally on Comixology. Uh, that is going to be a big hit for the, for the shop owners, for sure. For mm -hmm. sure, and that I feel like that kind of isn't. It's it's the same thing with the movies, right? Releasing movies straight at home and not letting the theaters have their release—that's a big hit to them. It's the same thing with the comic book right. shops, where you know, I, you know, I I feel like maybe we should just pause for a month or two, however it takes. You know what I mean? Because the question again, is, I'm a big collector. That? I, yeah, that, that that is the that's, question. That's I mean, again, question. I don't know. The, I don't. Why. I don't know the. I don't know the logistics of it. I I'm just as a collector. As you know, a person who ha who loves this industry, who knows many people who own their own shops, I'm like, you know, maybe, you know, if these bigger companies like Marvel and DC can withstand to pause revenue for a month, it would be really nice because you're helping the industry as a whole. Because the comic book shops are, you know, that's what gets the books out. That's It's like one of the, most, the biggest pegs in the industry, you know what I mean? So it's like, let's help each other out. But again, you got to look at both sides. Can Boom Studios, can IDW, can Marvel not get, have any sales of new comic books for a month, two months? You got to look at both sides. So I, I, I don't know. You know, in the my middle guess, here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my guess is that they're going to try to thread the needle. You know, you know, we know a lot of people in the industry and on both sides, both on the comic book shop side and in, on the actual publisher side. Mm -hmm. And there, there are points to be had on both ends, like you said. But again, it com it comes down to survivability and viability. Um, the shops are going to take a hit, but the shops would not exist if it was if the pop publishers survive. If the publishers if the publishers don't find a way to stay viable, you know, again, depending on how long all of this goes on. Um, but in the interim, they're going to they're they probably already are looking at this and probably already have a, a relative uh, knowledge of how long they can wait before they need to get sales going on some level and how long they can pause their issues, the release of new issues before they need to start finding different ways of doing it, whether that's shipped to home, you know, for those that want the hard copy. Well, I'll actually take that one further because a lot of creators have been taking to online saying, hey, look. We still got to make money too. This is their job. Being a comic book writer, being an artist, being an inker, being a colorist, that's your job. That's how, that is how you make your mortgage. So yep. if they're not even releasing books digitally, that means these artists, these writers and creators have no work. So yep. like you said, it, there's always two sides. You know, this, this case, there's like three, four sides. And, you know, yep. it, everyone kind of has to come in some sort of agreement to see what's viable for everyone. But in the end, like you said, without the publisher, without the creators, there is no comic book shops. If you don't have a creator to write Batman, to write Daredevil, and you right. don't have a publisher to publish that and send them to the comic book shops, there is no comic shop. 
So that's why I'm a little concerned with the with the state of brick and mortars right now because, you know, I like to be optimistic, but it, it is worrisome for sure, especially how the industry was going even before this. And uh, yeah. I, it's definitely not ideal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're going to get some relief, you know, for, through these government, uh, you know, uh, aid packages that are being put together. They're going to get some relief. Um, but again, you know, I think that there is more because they, if they have to stay closed, the brick and mortar comic book shops, if they've got to stay closed, they're going to stay closed for, you know, whatever period of time uh, is required of them. Mm -hmm. There's nothing they can do about that. Whereas, you know, and so whatever they're going to work out, whether the, the comic book publishers are putting out new weight to put out new releases or they just say, OK, we put out new releases digitally while everything was closed down. So people still have access to new, the new titles. And then we're going to distribute the hard copies because people who want those hard copies are still going to want them once they're released. You know oh, what yeah. I'm saying? So they might mm -hmm. just wait, but they can at least have some revenue going, not just for the publishers themselves, but all the creators and all the keep the industry alive and going and viable and as best as possible in the interim. Um, so I, it, for me, if I'm, you know, from a business side, uh, you know, it seems highly likely and, and that you have to you have to keep going on some front and then look for look for fun and exciting ways to bring back hard copy to the shops um, when all of this lifts and starts. For to sure. Uh, you know, whether that's, you know, you do like <clears throat> special variant releases of the issues, you know, that's like, you know, the quarantine lift variant cover, <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> Uh, to 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 bring collectors back in and to get the I think people are going to be excited to freaking do that anyway when all this is over everybody's so you know going to sure. be so sick of being trapped in their house uh, you know every freaking store restaurant <laughs> everything's going to be packed <laughs> when all this is over because everybody's going to be so excited to get out of the house um, but you know we'll we'll see I just I can't imagine this going on for you know three four five six weeks you know two months even. You know, in some cases, mm -hmm. they're talking about freaking eight weeks. Uh, I can't imagine that being the case and the publishers not and just sitting still. Yeah, well, I know even uh, locally, one of uh, the local com one of my local comic book shops around here, uh, Keith Comics, some of the things they're doing to, you know, kind of weather this is they're doing gift certificates. They're saying, you know, you spend $40 in a gift certificate. We'll actually give you that $40 will give you $50 in store credit. So you get an extra 10 for your four. So $40 is actually 50 in store credit. And then, you know, that, that way when they get shipments in, now you have money to buy all your comic books. So it, it kind of thought, you know, if you have a pull list at your comic book shop and you know, you go every once a month, two weeks, you're probably spending that 40, $50 anyway. So you no know, good way to help them out is basically getting a gift certificate, giving them the money now because they need it for overhead and stuff like yep. that. And then you're, you know, you're helping your local business and your comic book shop, especially if you have a pull list with them, that means, you know, you're probably buddies with uh, the people who work there. So I think that's clever. And I'm just, you know, in times like this, it definitely makes people creative because out of necessity, you have to be, right? So I'm curious right. to see all the new inventive things that are, that are going to happen. And, you know, this is definitely something we got to keep an eye out because, you know, the way things have been going in the world right now, things have been changing day by day. So, you know, this could even look very different, you know, next week, two weeks from yeah, now. Course, so. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll definitely keep everyone uh, updated with this because this is, you know, this is the, the heart <laughs> of, of what we do. This is the new books without, you know, yeah. new stories. Then we're just looking at back issues forever. So, but, you know, that's not going to happen. We're going to continue to get new stories. How yeah. that's going to be, how we're going to get it, you know, we'll see how things evolve. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be interesting no matter which way you slice it. And, and as we have said many, many, many times on all forms of uh, variant. Um, you know, as much as you can and as often as you can, um, you know, we got to look for ways to support our local businesses, our local comic book shops, um, you know, restaurants and all these different things. Um, you know, but in terms of our conversation, you know, these local comic book shops look for ways to support them. And if that is going out and floating them some cash to by buying a gift card that you can then redeem later on, um, you know, anything that we can do to help them right now. Um, they certainly could use it. So um, that's something we all should keep in mind.